How many people remember Sean John clothing? Sean John represented one facet of a business empire that helped Sean Combs ascend to the wealthiest entertainer under 40 in the United States at one point. Diddy's rise in the entertainment industry seemed to be strapped to a rocket beginning with his internship that a decade later would evolve into an annual salary of more than 300 million. Sean John was an expression of the personality and vision of his founder, and as such, the history of Sean John clothing was key in bringing what was then called quote unquote urban wear to the mainstream. But how did it all start? And why did Sean John fail to officially become a legacy brand in the world of fashion? Let's find out. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and this is Faded Glory, the rise and fall of Sean John Clothing. But before we get started, this video is brought to you by us here at TakeFlight214.com. More on us at the end of the video. But as for right now, please smash that like button for us and let's get it. The story for Sean John begins after Diddy, then known as Puff Daddy, had already gotten his foot in the door of the music business. He had just released his debut single, Can't Hold Me Down, which spent more than half of a year on the top of the charts. And his debut album, No Way Out, had been a chart topper for 11 straight weeks. But under the cloak of secrecy, Diddy and his longtime associate Jeffrey Tweedy had other plans in mind. They were in the middle of the golden era of street fashion. Tons of brands like FUBU, Carl Kanai, and Academics have proven that there was money to be made in the market and Diddy wanted to toss his hat into the ring. But the only problem was, they technically weren't clear to launch a separate brand. So to get around this, Diddy set Tweety up in a small cubicle inside of bad boy offices under the guise of making tour merch. I just thought about that. Me saying Diddy and Tweety, it sound like a bunch of cartoon characters. <laughs> but truth is, Diddy already had a three-year plan for exactly what he wanted the pieces to look like and who he wanted to market them to. He told Tweety that he didn't want huge logos and that he wanted high-quality materials. His goal was to create a sportswear line that was luxurious and aspirational. Tweety would get to the office around 8.30 in the morning before any of the music wing even arrived. Now, as you can imagine, a record company probably didn't get ramped up until much later, like 1 p.m. Diddy would bring his friends through hours after Tweety had left for the day and they would always go through the samples that he had been working on. And when he got there the next day, tons of stuff would be missing. Tweety would obviously be pissed that his hard work was walking off overnight, but Diddy, on the other hand, was pleased. He told Tweety, whatever they didn't steal, don't make anymore because that means the color didn't work. Tweety would eventually find a locker to stow his work away in that night, but the experience showed him exactly who his target audience was, young rappers and their fans. Another good thing that they had going for them was the fact that they had no problem with sourcing materials or marketing the idea. Diddy had more connections in the fashion industry than probably anyone who ever launched a streetwear brand before. I'm talking Anna Wintour, Andre Leon Talley, Tommy Hilfiger, I mean, how many among us has access to that kind of a friend circle? In fact, he actually approached Tommy Hilfiger looking to partner for the venture initially. Tommy was willing to play ball, but his investors only wanted him to focus on his flagship brand at the time. But he would go on to play a big role in helping Diddy learn the ropes of the fashion industry. And thanks to such factors, combined with Tweety's eye for alluring design, it didn't take long for Sean John to take off once it launched. But speaking of lunch and connections, Sean John partnered with Bloomingdale's for their official release. Now mind you, Bloomingdale's is a renowned luxury department store chain. They didn't carry FUBU, they didn't carry cross colors. But not only were they willing to carry Sean John, they were willing to roll out the red carpet for him. The launch of Sean John at Bloomingdale's was accompanied by a high profile event attended by celebrities, fashion enthusiasts, and media representatives. Sean John set out to prove that what was known as urban wear could also be seen as luxury. Diddy ran a celebrity driven label before anyone really even knew what that meant. He turned his fashion shows into must see TV. He appeared on the then super popular TRL often in his own clothes a record 39 times and he used the paparazzi and tabloids unquenchable curiosity to his advantage. 
This was also the middle of Diddy's J-Lo era, which meant that the paparazzi attention was at an even higher level, combining the star power of both of them, which in turn was the best form of advertisement for his brand. Perhaps the greatest attribute that Diddy has always had is the ability to put talented individuals in the right positions to win for the team. Whether you required a velour tracksuit or a tailored three-piece, they had the talent to make it happen, which at the time was a rather novel concept for a single brand. Designers told stories of how guys like Will Smith or Chris Rock would come down to pick up one of one pieces for various oh, award shows. Obviously separate, not not together because come on. But by 2004, Sean John had an annual turnover in the region of 400 million, and Combs was awarded Menswear Designer of the Year. Meanwhile, Tweedy would eventually be rewarded for his years of hard work with a president and CEO title. And despite the fact that tons of other rap clothing lines were around at the time, I mean, we did a video chronicling the entire list. Sean John was hands down the largest one. They were all over the place. They also had signed a deal with Macy's, which would see the brand carried in every location nationwide. But fans of the channel already know what that means. Sean John has spent so many years at the top that they didn't even notice all of the smaller thiefdoms now laying siege to the throne. As the early 2000s wore on, streetwear had been born. And now you had younger guys with a new vision of where fashion was headed. Brands like Sean John began to look cliche and honestly, kind of corny. But despite all this, Sean John was still doing numbers at retail though. I mean, nowhere near where they were at their peak, but stellar nonetheless. So much so that in 2016, Global Brands Group purchased the majority stake from Diddy in an attempt to capitalize off what juice was left to be squeezed more than anything else in my opinion. But of all old husk of brands to buy and try to beat more dust out of, Sean John was definitely the better option. They still had the Macy's deal and by then, they were OG status. However, before GBG could truly get a chance to snuggle up with the brand good, they were hit with financial issues. So bad that it resulted in Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This gave Diddy the opportunity to swoop back in and scoop up the majority portion for a fraction of what GBG had paid him only five years prior. So, smart business move, definitely. But Diddy seems to have bigger plans in mind for his longtime staple. He stated, quote, Seeing how streetwear has evolved to rewrite the rules of fashion and impact culture across categories, I'm ready to reclaim ownership of the brand, build a team of visionary designers, and global patterns to rewrite the next chapter of Sean John's legacy." End quote. As for whether or not he'll be successful in this, remains to be seen. It'll definitely be an uphill fight, what with all the new brands and all out now, but not impossible. Sean John was luxury streetwear before anyone thought of even pairing the two words together. Although brands like FUBU and Rockaware were huge in their own right, None of them, in my opinion, rose to the mainstream success level that Sean John did. Testament to that being that they were the only ones who, despite down periods, never took a hiatus. To this day, you can still find Sean John all over the country, and it still sells. I think we all, including myself, overlook Sean John for all that they have done for street fashion over the years. I remember asking in an older video why no streetwear brand has ever risen to legacy brand status the likes of Polo or Gucci, but have we always had one in plain sight that we were just overlooking? Is Sean John that ambassador? Hit us up in the comment section and let us know what you think. And if you made it this far, we hope that means that you liked the video, and if you did, what you waiting for? Don't forget to hit the like button for us. It really does help us grow and help out in the YouTube algorithm. But before we close things off for the week, first I'd like to let you know a bit more about us at TakePlight214.com. We're a collection of artists creating pop culture related pieces for home decor and apparel. We've been in business for over 15 years providing quality art and customer service globally. But rather than asking for donations or money for nothing, I simply propose that you stop by the site and see if you see anything that you like. 
We've got hundreds of designs to choose from and we also do custom one of pieces. So stop by takeflight214.com after this. The link is down below in the description. As always, if you want to be updated whenever we drop a new episode, then hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. That way you'll be dinged each time a new video drops. We do these once a week. And with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from takeflight214.com signing out. Until next time, peace.